Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Wednesday, December 20th. And I think yesterday we got our date wrong, but today is day 75. Day 75 since the October 7th attacks on South Israel. The updates I wanted to give today are actually about some of the activism and some of the ways that Christian groups are responding. Um, and I'm encouraged in that regard. Today we had our weekly prayer and it was small today, but about a dozen of us gathered in prayer. And I was encouraged because there was another group that was gathering alongside of us that was a Catholic group um, that was calling to pray for peace. Um, and they had a prayer call. And in addition to their um, prayer time together, afterwards, they lit candles and they all called their members of Congress. I heard that there were more than 120 people on their prayer conversation. And we prayed at the same time on a different call. You know, there were only a dozen or 15 of us, um, but we prayed alongside of them. And it was um, the group that ended up calling for a ceasefire today was Franciscan Action Network, Franciscan Peace Center from Clinton, Iowa, Mary Knoll, Office for Global Concerns that sits on Churches for Middle East Peace's board, Pax Christi, Sisters of Charity, their um, Leavenworth Office of Justice, Peace and Integrity of Creation, Sisters of Mercy, their America's Institute Justice Team, and the U.S. Federation of the Sisters of Joseph. And they had an opening prayer that said, O God of peace and justice, we beseech you and bless those entrusted with chartering peace for the Middle East and its people. Grant them patience, understanding, vision, and courage needed for this formidable challenge. Entrust them with full awareness of their great task and of the fearful consequences should peace elude their efforts. Sustain us as we draw upon the moving power of your spirit to calm waters, turning with generations of conflict. Guide us as we shape to a new vision in which all the peoples of our one creator will find reconciliation and wholeness. Strengthen our resolve to act in support of our nation's leaders to forge in the Middle East a full and lasting peace for both peoples of, pe of Palestine and Israel and enable us to bring about a peace in Jerusalem as a light to all of the nations of the peoples of the world. To this we say, Salam, Shalom peace and amen. And I wanted to start with that. And what I originally wanted to share today um, was actually just some other encouragements. Yesterday, there was a group of people um, that gathered in Washington, D.C., calling for a ceasefire. And another one of our board member groups, the Church of the Brethren, um, uh, they participated. There was a pastor of one of the local D.C. Churches of the Brethren who engaged in those protests. And I saw pictures of her and um, she gathered with dozens of leaders on Capitol Hill that were standing in nonviolence, calling on members of Congress and the Biden administration to support a comprehensive ceasefire and she was arrested yesterday with others in civil disobedience at the U.S. Capitol. And the group of protesters had signs that said, the people choose life, ceasefire now. And I'm encouraged by the fact that so many people are continuing to be active. Um, I'm home. I'm back in the Pacific Northwest. I've been recovering from a cold. And honestly, it's been discouraging to be back home because I've been feeling like, what am I doing? Right. Like, or that our efforts aren't making a difference. And so I've been in prayer. Um, our staff uh, has been working so hard and we're continuing to be diligent, but I've been encouraged that we're in this together and we're not going to give up hope. And Christmas is just around the corner. And as we're preparing for Advent and the reminder that Christ came into a broken world to bring hope and light into that place, that we will continue to be diligent in our efforts towards peace. And I wanted to share with you today, um, this is from a friend and colleague. Um, he's worked alongside of Christians for Social Action for many years. He's a revolutionary. His name is Andre Henry. And he's been posting on Facebook about activists and nonviolence. And he's been talking about a rule that's called the 3.5% rule. I'd never heard of this before. And so he posted and he said, do you want to see a free Palestine? Do you want to see an end to war? Or perhaps you want 
your local government to stop banning, banning books by Black authors, then you need to know about the 3.5% rule, but don't overdo it. He said, I'm glad that more people are talking about this figure representing the surprisingly low percentage of participation that it takes to revolutionize societies in the past. It doesn't mean that we don't need everyone to change the world, as a lot of people say. But at the same time, we have to remember that revolutionaries our revolutions aren't won by numbers alone, that we need to struggle skillfully, we need to be strategic, we need to be relentless, that small percentages of big numbers are still big numbers. And he points to um, Erica Chenoweth's work, um, who talks about an active minority can assume the presence of a passive majority. And so he has these, um, I encourage you to check out his social media. Um, it's at the Andre Henry, and he talks about um, what the 3.5% rule is. Essentially, um, in the study of hundreds of revolutions from 1900 to 2006, researcher Erica Chenoweth found that no oppressive regime was able to withstand the sustained, active, nonviolent resistance of only 3.5% of the population. This is sometimes referred to as active popular support. This figure has informed the work of tomorrow makers around the world. So what does this mean? Um, this means that the 3.5% rule is descriptive, not necessarily prescriptive or predictive. So just if we mobilize 3.5% of all people, it doesn't mean that change is necessarily going to happen. It means that a committed and creative minority of sustained, active, and skillful nonviolent resistance can create change. It doesn't mean we just need the right number of people. It doesn't mean the right number of people guarantee victory. This isn't just a magic number, but it can be a rule of thumb rather than a simple formula for revolution. There are several factors other than numbers that make civil resistance powerful, such as clear objectives. We have very clear objectives. Our clear objective is calling for a comprehensive ceasefire. Ceasefire now, an end to all violence against civilians. Hamas, lay down your weapons. Israel, stop bombing Gaza. Stop the ground incursion on Gaza. We condemn all violence against civilians. We have very clear objectives. We're calling for immediate and adequate humanitarian assistance into Gaza. We're calling for release of hostages. Those are the three things that we've been calling for consistently since October 7th. Wise and skillfully implemented strategic plans, widespread public sentiment, tactical diversity, and training for civil resistance, which we're seeing in all of these movements that are so powerful. Andre Henry goes on and gives um, some resources, Erica Chenoweth's book, Civil Resistance, What Everyone Needs to Know. Um, I've not read, it's on my reading list. But I just wanted to give us some encouragement. 3.5% is not a very significant percentage of the population. And we're seeing people be mobilized and calling for a ceasefire. When we see the percentages and the statistics of people that want an end to war, it's growing and it's growing. So call your members of Congress. Pray for peace. If you don't know how to call your members of Congress, go to www.cmep.org. Go to Take Action on the top of the you know, the menu bar, and then you can go and it'll say, call your members of Congress and you can follow the instructions on your screen. And that's a starting point. Um, we're preparing for Advent, the Prince of Peace uh, coming into the world to disrupt evil in the world, to bring peace, love for enemies, love for neighbor. And so be encouraged that we're not alone on this journey, that we're in this together. We will continue to work for peace and to work for an end to war.